Hey folks, welcome back to eczemahealing.org. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. This is the video that some of you have been asking me for, a lot of you have probably been waiting for, and this is one of the most important videos on this channel. It's all about my blood work. We're gonna get into cholesterol, to protein, to liver function test, some of the stuff that is really pertinent to people that are on a whole foods, plant-based diet, the questions, these big questions, what about cholesterol when you don't eat cholesterol? What about protein when you don't eat that much protein? What's going on? Let's have a look at what is in my veins from the lab, stuff that you can't argue with. I'm really excited to bring this information to you. Let's get into it. So, so this is what the laboratory has issued me with. This is from a place called Smile Laboratory here in Chiang Mai in the north of Thailand. Apologies that some of this stuff is in Thai, but all you need to know is that this is me here. That is my name. This is the date that the test was done. And we're gonna start with cholesterol. So, Cholesterol, my score was 172 from a reference range of 150 to 200. These are the scores for triglycerides, 75 out of a reference range of 30 to 150. And HDL, my result was 48 uh, out of a score, out of a reference range of 40 to 60. LDL, 109, where the reference range was anything under 150. So. Immediately we can see that we are in range for all of these things. Um, so that's great. And um, what is really intriguing though about this is, and a lot of you plant-based people out there might be able to relate to this, have you expected your cholesterol to actually be a bit lower? I mean, I know ranges and what's healthy and what's heart attack proof, et cetera, et cetera, varies from country to country. And what the plant-based doctors in America say, some of them, I'm not sure if it's T. Colin Campbell or Caldwell Esselstein. One of them, I remember hearing, <coughs> hearing them saying that really you want your cholesterol to be below 150 to really be heart attack proof. And um, I don't know, what your opinions on that are. If, if you have an opinion, let me know down below. Maybe if you, if you have heart issues and you, you've been in direct contact with some cardiologists, let me know, I'll be interested to hear. But um, what this says to me, and I'm gonna make another video on this, is I have a tendency for higher cholesterol. Because let's not forget, I don't eat cholesterol. I never take cholesterol in from all the cholesterol sources. I never eat fish, I never eat chicken or, or meat or eggs or, or dairy. I never eat cholesterol. So my body is constructing all of this all by itself based on the food that I am eating. I'm not saying that the food I eat doesn't affect how much cholesterol my body makes, but I'm not actually eating cholesterol. And so the fact that I can, I can produce a, a mid-range result like 172 for total cholesterol that's pretty staggering. And um, I estimate that that score would be quite high compared to some other um, plant-based people uh, living this lifestyle. So obviously you want LDL to be low. And um, you know, again, I could, afford that, I could afford that being a bit lower because LDL is the bad, bad cholesterol and then HDL is known as the good cholesterol. And um, Really, you want the, L the HDL to be higher and you want the LDL to be lower. So it is what it is. We can certainly see that the, the genetic disposition is in my family to have higher cholesterol. And I am gonna make a detailed video on this. I'm gonna get up some chronometer charts, some food charts, cholesterol containing. Let's get really scientific about cholesterol um, in the next video. And that one will probably be helpful to some of my family members and some of you there who have similar genes to me where you've got a disposition for this diabetic heart disease stuff. Okay, moving on, moving on. Uh, here is a massive, massive topic, total protein. Where do you get your protein? On a whole foods, plant-based diet, you're not eating any protein. 
immediately we can see 7.4 from a range of 6.6 .6 to 8.3 slap bang in the middle of the range for total protein albumin globulin and bilirubin these are other types of protein um, that do various things in the body and we can immediately see that i am in range for all of them i'm in range for all of them so how is this happening how am i having such good protein levels if i never eat meat i never eat fish i never eat eggs i never drink milk what is going on here maybe i need to make another video about this but i hope this is scientific evidence proof at least anecdotally for me that the whole protein thing really really is a myth and protein is super easy to obtain on a whole foods plant-based diet everything you eat if it's a whole food has got protein in you can absorb it really well especially if you're not eating junk processed food and refined foods and oils you will absorb this stuff well from whole foods plant-based from oats from rice from potatoes from you know not even talking about the high protein containing foods like beans and legumes and stuff just eat whole foods plant-based and keep it going keep it clean keep it long term you will do fine um, let me know if you want me to put up some more examples like chronometer examples and stuff about how to achieve these protein levels on a whole foods plant-based diet let's move on let's move on to AST ALT and ALP these three are all to do with liver function so AST and ALT work together to give you an indication on how well your liver is functioning and um, the only range they give you here is you want to be from 0 to 35 or 0 to 45 you just want to be below those without getting too detailed into the ratio of how these work together and what the actual indication of this is on your liver basically this tells me that my liver is functioning well it's excreting what it needs to excrete it's filtering what it needs to filter it's creating what it needs to create it's doing well alp is something called alkphos alkaline phosphate and again this is just another biomarker for how your liver and your kidneys are doing so the fact that i'm in range for these things quite low down within the range is excellent excellent so let's move on to uh, let's move on to these next two BUN and creatinine now immediately you'll notice that I am under range I scored a 5 out of a range from 8 to 20 for BUN I'm low on I'm low on bun oh no what am I going to do <laughs> so I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about BUN and why I got a low score for this let's just finish off the list I'm going to come back to that one um, creatinine this is to do with bun um, and the fact that I scored within range on creatinine is a good sign um, and the final two here are fasting blood sugar and uric acid both of which I am in range for I scored 87 just out of interest you know this is another pretty interesting one for those of you who are a bit concerned about the number of bananas that I eat the amount of fruit that I eat even eating refined sugar sometimes and not worrying too much about that my fasting blood sugar is 87 out of the range that they give you here which is 70 to 110 and you know as I was mentioning ranges do differ from lab to lab maybe in the UK that range may fall a little bit higher or a little bit lower just depending on sometimes unfortunately these ranges are dictated by the general um, results in that particular um, population so an area that is prone for diabetes sometimes they, they set a higher range on this stuff just to make the whole nation look not quite so bad which is ridiculous but anyway the truth is in the UK at least if you have a score if you have an FBS of above 100 you are pre-diabetic and if you have an FBS of above 126 you are diabetic and so 87 is good and again if you want a conversion on that um, I've got a conversion table here for you from millimol to milligrams per deciliter so I scored an 87 which is about 
So the final one here, uric acid, I scored 4.8 out of a range of 3.5 to 7.2, which is great. You do want to be at the lower end of these ranges for something like uric acid because it is a waste product. You don't want it in your body. You want it being flushed out nice and quickly. And um, so it's good that we're not towards the upper end of the range for that. Now, getting back to BUN, getting back to BUN, I scored a 5 out of an 8 to 20. So let's have a look on WebMD what BUN actually is. It's a blood urea nitrogen test. And um, this helps to see how well your kidneys are working. So urea nitrogen is a normal waste product that your body creates after you eat. Your liver breaks down the proteins in your food. And while it does that, it creates blood urea nitrogen, also known as BUN. Your liver releases the substance into the blood and it eventually ends up in your kidneys. So BUN is a waste product. Urea nitrogen is a waste product from digesting proteins. So are we starting to see a little bit of a pattern here? Um, we starting to get a clue of uh, what, um, why I might be a bit low on BUN. When your kidneys are healthy, they remove the BUN, usually leaving a small amount of it in the blood. So this is, even when your kidneys are healthy, they remove it, but usually leave a small amount. For the most part, your kidneys get rid of it by flushing it out of your body. When your kidneys are not healthy, they have trouble removing the BUN and leave more of it in, in your blood, meaning your level's gonna be higher. The blood urea nitrogen test, also called a BUN, or a serum BUN test measures how much of the, of the waste product you have in your blood. If your levels are off the normal range, this can mean that either your kidneys or your liver may not be working properly. So we can see that the risk here mainly is if you are higher off the end of the scale, because BUN is a waste product. You want it leaving the system as quickly as possible. So the things that can make it low are if you're eating a pretty low protein diet, which we know that I am. We can see I'm getting plenty of protein my total protein in my system is great, but I'm eating wise sources of that protein. And so the protein is not, it's not leaving much waste product. Like the usual range is eight to 20 because of the typical sources of protein that people eat. But the choices of protein that I'm choosing is leaving less of the urea nitrogen in the blood, which in my opinion is great. Now, one of the other things that can affect it as well is if you really overhydrate, if you drink a lot of water because this basically dilutes your, your blood, dilutes the, the waste products that are in your, in your system and this can affect uric acid and your blood urea nitrogen. And I did actually drink a lot of water right before the lab test because I knew I had to give a urine sample. Um, and so maybe that um, artificially lowered it a little bit as well. But with all that being said, I'm really comfortable with having a, a low BUN score. And um, let me know if you are also a plant-based eater and uh, you have a low BUN, what are your thoughts on this? Um, and if you just have a low BUN and you're not a whole foods plant-based eater, what are your thoughts on having this score? Let me know your thoughts on these, uh, on these lab tests. Um, I was pretty, I was pretty interested and excited to, to see what all these levels were. I'm really pleased that I'm in range for basically everything. I'm feeling really great. I'm really not concerned about not eating enough protein to get that, um, that BUN score up. Um, I've got a, a ride here that I did today on Strava. Um, this is a, a ride through the hills here in Northern Thailand, 82 kilometers four hours of moving time. And um, we can see the elevation profile here. Um, a beautiful ride that we did. Uh, small group of us here in Northern Thailand. And, um, and um, we can see, um, let's, go to, let's go to my profile and show you my overview as well for my stats. And um, here we go, on average, I've been doing about 250 kilometers a week. Distance for 2018 has been 8,400 um, with a fair bit of elevation, about 100,000 meters of elevation. And all of this has been with excellent recovery, no muscle aches, the ability just to get up and do that all over again the following day. This may not seem like a lot of activity to some of you, 
and to some of you it will seem like loads of activity. But the point is, I think I'm getting enough protein, enough nutrients into my body in order to fuel all of this. Uh, my skin is still excellent, um, no signs of, of anything untoward with my skin, eczema, dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis and all of that good stuff. So. There you go. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's um, anything else you'd like to see from these, uh, from these blood tests. Um, cholesterol, I think, is the one that I'd most like to hear, hear from you about. Um, what do you think? A score of 172 um, for somebody who is basically vegan. Is that too high? What are your thoughts? By the way, 172 in UK terms is about 4.4 about 4.4 so there you go I'm gonna make another video specifically about cholesterol um, because I think it's a really interesting topic even though it may not quite be in line <laughs> with the general thrust of this channel but bear with me on that and um, I hope you enjoy it anyway we'll see you then <laughs>